It's called born again. Come on, is our motivation really to get to heaven someday? Or is our motivation to get heaven back inside of us? So that the kingdom of God can be right here at hand. That his will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Come on, these scriptures have meaning. And they're all in there for a purpose. He did not die on the cross to take you to heaven someday when you die. He died on the cross to put truth back in you, put his life back in you, and get you back on track and back into purpose and make you one with the eternal one. And of course you'll never die because you were never made to die from the beginning. So he redeemed the whole package and gave it to you. Let's not miss this. Let's not make it all about me and catching a break and getting a blessing. Do you know how many discouraged people go to church? Because we don't understand why God sent his son. Let me challenge you this morning. You can't be discouraged unless your focus is on yourself, your circumstances, what it's costing you, and what you have to do now because of this, that, or the other. And if people are involved, now your heart's even hard, and you're mad at them, and it's their fault. And now you're a million miles away from the very heart of God that saved you from your sins. How's that for straight talk? Look, I've lived deceived enough in my life. And I've hated enough in my life. And I've been selfish enough in my life. Now the truth's coming, the light's coming. I finally understand freedom. And they put me up here and give me a mic. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to speak it from the rooftops. And cut into religion and cut up this stuff that's a form of and not the power of. And all of a sudden you can sing and wave two hands and do the flag thing and you still got animosity in your heart towards your spouse and that ain't cool and it doesn't reveal God and it messes people up and it's messing you up. So I'm going to talk about these things. I'm not going to point you out. I'm going to say if it's you and the slipper fits, kick the thing off. Don't be Cinderella and wear it. Kick it off and say that ain't my shoe to wear. I was not made for animosity. I was not made for rightness. I was not made to be right. I was made to be found right in the sight of God. And I was made to live by his spirit and to make peace and walk in love. And that ain't weak and that ain't a pushover. That's Jesus. Yeah? Come on. <laughs> you ever get stripped naked and crucified for doing everything perfect? You did things somewhat right. And it was called wrong, and you freaked out. <laughs> yeah, come on. When I got accused of something that I didn't say or do, and they said that's what I meant, and I didn't mean it, I freaked out. Why? Because it's all about me. And I'm mad that you're thinking that about me and judging me and not seeing my heart. And Jesus did everything flawless and perfect and got treated like he was completely wrong. And he never said a word. I don't know about you, but I'm going to follow that. Because in the end, that's all that's going to matter. And faith believes that. And one day I'm going to stand before him and look into his fiery eyes and amazing eyes full of life and glory. And I sure don't want to be going, oops. Uh, Jesus, I, I'd have believed you more if it wasn't for so and so. Well, why didn't you answer my prayer? I mean, if it wasn't for my spouse, you know I tried. I tried, Lord. You ain't even going to be able to think that looking into the light of truth. You're just going to go, uh-oh. I believed lies. I justified my flesh. And I missed the mark of why I was here. And I never walked out the things of the Spirit. I did church, but I didn't become her. I went to church, but it was never who I was. Wow. And then hopefully... You'll just cry and he'll dry every tear because he's merciful and you just won't have a legacy like you could have, but he'll still love you and hug you and receive you because he's amazing. I don't know what that will look like, but I know I don't want to look in his eyes and go, oops. I know if it doesn't work then, I don't want to let it work now. If I won't be able to say it in that day, why can I say it now and make it work and buy time that I don't have to give? Redeem the time. The days are evil. We're in the world. We're not of the world. He who loves the things of the world does not have the love of the Father in him. And the things of the world are the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. If you're living to be somebody in the eyes of men, you're way off track. 
If you're posting things to get a lot of thumbs up, you better reevaluate. You got one big thumbs up where it matters. <laughs> you ought to be glad you know the old Roman days, the emperor, you ought to be glad the God of the universe didn't go. You got the best like forever. <laughs> and you weren't even living likable. <laughs> and you stood before him, and they stand there like this in the Roman days. And everybody's holding their breath, and the guy on his knees is like, what's it going to be? And God's not even thinking about it. Why? Because no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, he knows who he created you to be and he knows what you'll look like if you ever get this and you surrender. And he knows that loving you is where it's at because you have purpose, you have potential, and you have destiny right in front of you. And on your darkest day, he never lost sight of that. And love has never failed. On your deepest journey of rebellion and willfulness, he said, you're so much more than that. You have such a greater purpose, and I'm going to keep loving you, and one day you'll see. That sure beats being ticked off, frustrated, getting under his skin, and him giving up on us. That's what we've all done to each other. We hear somebody's name. We haven't seen them for four years. We hear their name, and all we think of is the thing we don't like about them, and that's how we identify them. We ain't done nothing right. And he sees us for how he made us. <laughs> you think I understand this and I'm going to have an attitude today and he said, she said, and tit for tat and what I feel? No, friend. <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a Christian. <laughs> and I'm going to follow him and tomorrow ain't the right day either. Because the gospel taught me this one thing and if you can learn this one thing through this one session... It'll pay great dividends. If you just get one thing out of all I say this morning, if you just take this with you, it will make such a difference in your everyday life. You let the gospel teach you, and through prayer you wake up and you establish it by saying it. Pin it on your mirror. Do whatever you got to do. But get it in your heart. This one thing, that every day you wake up, nobody owes you a thing. That would challenge every hurt, every offense, every failed expectation. It would take all the lines away and knock the chips right off your shoulder. Nobody owes me a thing. Why? Because I owe no man anything but to love. And it was the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom, so he gave me all things, so I'm complete in him. So now I'm not driven by need. So now I wake up in the morning and I actually don't need you for me to be okay. I need you to lock arms with me and be an army rising up and run this race and overtake the earth with his love and glory. I need you to run with me. But I don't need you to know who I am or be encouraged. And because I don't need you to know who I am and be encouraged, I'm finally positioned to love you. Because now you can't disappoint me, hurt me, break my heart, and I don't have inner church issues, and I'm not church shopping because I'm hurt. And pastor is this, and elder so-and-so is that, and oh, the devil's in that place. No, you're being real deceived. He's a lot closer than that. You wake up in the morning, nobody owes you a thing. You'll finally understand what freedom is that we sing about. Jesus never said, if any man come after me, let him pray a prayer that qualifies him for heaven. He said, if any man comes after me, which I love that because everybody's invited, if any man. The word man means human, all-inclusive. It's not gender. If any man woman, child, come after me. Let him first deny. I'm concerned we don't preach that. 
I'm, I'm concerned because people have been legalistic that we push that out of the message because we don't want people to hear us legalistic. So we just make it beneficial. Hey, if you hit a tree on the way home, do you know where you're going? If not, pray this prayer. And that's how we present the gospel. That's never how Jesus presented the gospel. Jesus said, this thing will cost you what you never were in the first place. Life for yourself. So you can get back to why you're here in the first place. Christ in you, the hope of glory. What's the first thing a Christian has to do if he's going to follow Jesus? Deny himself. Why? If you read Genesis 1, man wasn't made for himself. He was made for the image of God. But because we compare ourselves among ourselves and we weigh ourselves by our own track record, we forfeit grace and life change and transformation so we think we are who we've been instead of who we can become. So instead of putting off the old and putting on the new, we hide behind language and we do church and the whole time we can become her. I'm not being mean. I'm not being judgmental. There's too many schisms among us sometimes. There's too many inner issues. There's too many people jumping ship and skipping and hopping and hurt. 90% of counseling and pastoral counseling is people struggling with each other. And it proves we do not understand why God sent his son. And somehow we think it all revolves around me. And we're all caught up in God loving me in a superficial way to feel special because we don't feel special. God loving me, but it's not stopping with God loving me. It's me becoming that same love. See, the finished work of the cross is not when a man prays a prayer to go to heaven. The finished work of the cross is when his nature is restored back to love. Because then he's back to the beginning. And then redemption has its way, and you're brought back to original value. <laughs> your confession to go to heaven doesn't change lives. Your love does. <laughs> your promotion and your income increase, and your provision and protection doesn't change lives. It just blesses you as an individual. That's not the goal of your Christianity. The goal of your Christianity is walking in love. The goal of your Christianity is going to work with an attitude that Jesus would have if he was in your shoes, and he is. <laughs> the goal of Christianity is being betrayed and not living like you were betrayed. If God lived like he was betrayed, he would need some serious counsel. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he didn't tremble in his bottom lip and cry and say, how can you do this to me? He didn't say, I've been there for you all this time. Pouring out my life. I mean, I came from heaven into Mary. I became a man trying to help you. Don't you get it? And all you guys are doing is bucking for, phys for position and you say you're going to die for me? Ain't one of you ready to die for me. When I get struck, you're all running. You're out of here. Bunch of losers. <laughs> See, we didn't learn that from him because we never saw that in him. This is how you know if you know him. Not believe he died on the cross, not go to church, not do a daily devotion. This is how you know you know him. That on the night you're betrayed, you don't call a friend crying and tell him all about it. Because you've already laid down your life. That's how you know you know him. I'm not talking about serving in a ministry, feeding the hungry, and giving showers to the homeless. That's all good. But you only know that you know him by your love. That's the Bible. It says, he who loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He who loveth not just doesn't know God. Doesn't say you don't lead worship. Doesn't say you don't itinerant speak. Doesn't say you don't go on a mission trip annually. But it does say if you don't love, there's one reason not to. You don't know him like you could. And this is eternal life that you might Guess what we've turned eternal life into? A prayer that benefits me instead of a truth that transforms me. Be real careful you don't get seduced by religion in this hour. Be real careful you don't end up in a group with tickled ears. Be sure that every morning you wake up, you be with him. That you don't let church attendance take the place of knowing him. You don't let your service in ministry take the place of knowing him. 
You don't let your Christian t-shirt, ringtone, screensaver, and bumper sticker take the place of knowing him. This is eternal life, that you might know him, the only true God, and his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent. Which tells me I can't know him without becoming more like him. Because if you don't love, you don't know him. I'm not saying you don't see your need for a Savior and weren't sincere and didn't get your sins forgiven. I'm not saying your name's not in the book of life. But is that really our goal? Our name in the book of life? Or is our goal becoming what he created us to be and becoming what he paid for? So how's the world benefit if you have eternal life and you're still angry at your boss and you still shot down your spouse? Somehow we got tricked into preaching a gospel that benefits me without transforming me. Deny yourself. Pick up your... Now you're following Jesus. What's pick up your cross? You never let sin against you produce sin in you. You never repay evil with evil. You overcome evil with good. You, you, you tone down a harsh word with a kind word. You give your shirt and your tunic. You go an extra mile. Because you've already laid down your life. That's called carry your cross.